Hi, this is Don Schaefer, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube class as well as channel. And we've been on a mission here. We've been talking about personal transformation, creating a life that you just can't wait to live. And uh, we've been going through a series of topics, and we've been working with the understanding that each one of us is born into this world as a piece of hardware that has to be programmed. And as we grow, we get programmed in different areas. And that's where children, very young on, they are a clean slate, but they learn. And it's been said, you know, it's interesting because you give them a year or so, they learn how to walk, but they learn how to talk. And if you speak English, they speak English. If you speak Spanish, you, they speak Spanish. And if you speak multiple languages in your home, these children will learn multiple languages. It's interesting in life as far as how we see things, how children see things, how things evolve around, the attitudes, all the stuff is all programmed inside an individual. And what we're trying to do is we're putting together a series of understandings, helping to program you in different ways so that you can see things in a different light. And I know last week we talked about you're not listening. That was the title of it. We talked about the fact that our society today is in a big problem as far as people finding someone to listen to you. You know, you live life and it seems like you've got so much to say or you've got issues or whatever it might be, but you don't have anybody to listen to you. You sit there and some people will get married with the idea well, you know, the person that I love here is a very good listener. And after they're married, all of a sudden, the ears are turned off. And we live in a society today where we're finding a lot of people plugged into social media, plugged into TVs. It's not like it once was, where people would sit on the front porch after dinner or sit around, you know, t uh, by a fire somewhere and just talking to each other. Today, everybody is in their own little world, somewhere is plugged in. And that's where we're, depression and all kinds of anxieties, fears, loneliness, all this stuff is on a great increase. And we talked a little bit about how in Japan, uh, just recapping here, in Japan, they hire actors, they hire people to be children excited to see them or someone to be at their house when they come home and greet them, you know, just an actor, just so they have somebody to communicate with. We go to counselors, we, we hire coaches, we pay big money just to have someone to listen to us. And that's where we ourselves, a lot of times, are not good listeners. We ourselves have a hard time listening to people. Because this is a, 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 how would you say, this is something that is learned. This is something that has to be programmed in you. You have to make a conscious effort to say to yourself, I am going to listen to people. I'm going to listen to what they say to me. You know, I'm not just going to be thinking about what I'm going to say or thinking about the weather or the pizza or whatever it might be while they're talking, but I'm going to really listen to them. And this becomes an art and this becomes a gift. And this is something in your life that will make you very valuable. But we went through half of the lesson, half the class last time, talking about situations in our society. But then we came to a point how we develop an ear, a listening ear, and how God wants to speak to us. We talked about the spiritual side of things and how so many people, God is so much. He is the creator. He's one that designed us, made us, and has put a plan together for all of us. And a lot of times we don't listen. We don't take the time to listen to possibly what he's got to say to us. And we have to develop an ear for that. And people who take the time, they can have the blessings of God. They can have direction in their life. The Bible says it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. Everything we'd ever want in life is there for us if we can tune in and be able to hear. But this week, this week, we're going to be talking about more than expected 2.19. It's an upgrade to your software. And we're using the same scripture in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. And it goes like, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, being not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove the perfect and the good will of God 
in life for you. So he talks about us not being conformed to a world. We live in a world of conformity. We, we call it uh, television programs. You know, programs to program who? Program us. Television. We talk about a vision. A vision for what? Giving us a vision. There's so much in life in this world of ours that is triggering our thoughts in many different ways. But now we're going to talk about something that I think is important is more than what's expected. You know, and that's where in our life, a lot of times we ourselves don't expect much and the society doesn't expect much, but our creator, the one that engineered us, expects a lot. And we're going to talk about some of that. God is about to do the supernatural in your life. I've got a quote here by uh, Ed Milat. It says, you are only one more thought and action away from transforming your life from average to extraordinary. Well, sometimes when we realize how close we really are to the extraordinary in life, what actions we take, sometimes we cut ourselves way too short. And if we can just do more than what is expected sometimes, it will bring us into an area that we possibly have never been before and open up a whole new spectrum of life. I want to talk about a few things here, but first of all, I'm going to start off with finding your best life by doing more than expected. Okay, it's all about your will and willingness to do more than what's expected of you. The strategies you will receive here will transform your life if they are adopted. We're trying to give you something that you have to adopt in life. It's interesting because a lot of people are very knowledgeable in life, but there's more than knowledge. It's the application. I know uh, sometimes I talk about this. Sometimes kids will go to school for four years. They'll get big degrees, big bills, but big degrees. They'll get out of school and they will never go into the field that they went to school for. You know, they'll take on a job doing something different totally it, because there's an element of application. It, Knowledge is one thing, but application is the next thing. You know, you have to be able to apply. And that's where we're going to be talking about some stuff here. And it isn't valuable as knowledge alone. It's only a val valuable when it's applied. That's where it's important for us to realize that. You know, and that's where we need to realize we were never born to be average. God has got something bigger and better for us. Your prize is frequently only one step away the things that you're searching for. Yes, sometimes it's only one step that is needed to reach that. There's a story I, I love telling, a story about a man named Darby, and this goes back, back in the mid 1800s. His uncle was in Colorado, and he was out there with a pick and shovel, and he struck gold. And he tells his nephew back in uh, Maryland, he says, you know what? He says, there's gold out there. And, and this, his name was Darby. His nephew was Darby, and Darby says, wow, he's, they knew nothing about mining, but uh, what he got was something called gold fever. He got the fever for gold. So he didn't have any money, any equipment, but all he could envision is striking it rich and being rich for the rest of his life. So what he did is he persuaded a bunch of businessmen out in Maryland to invest money. They invested money, they bought equipment, he goes out to Colorado and he starts to dig. And sure enough, he hits gold. And they were getting lots of gold and uh, they were sending it to the, the refineries or whatever. And they were starting to really take off when all of a sudden there was nothing. It completely dried up. So initially they hit the gold, but then it completely dried up. So he, you know, he, he didn't know what to do. He's sitting there, just, nothing is happening. They dig, they dig, nothing happens. But there was a junk man in the area, a guy that collected things and stuff, but he was always interested in mining. So he studied a little bit of mining. And uh, when Darby was failing and finding gold and everything, he sold his equipment and the deed he had for the claim that he had on the property over to this junk man. And what this junk man did, he went and hired a geologist and a geologist came out and looked over the area, looked where the gold was found, and he said, gold goes in veins. It's kind of a, a horizontal type thing, it goes in veins. And he said, you know, I, I do, by looking at what you have here, I think if you dug this way, 
which was three feet from where they quit, that you'll find gold. And he dug and they found the richest vein of gold that they ever found out west. It was only three feet away. So what Darby had done, you know, he got some of the excitement and all this going, found some gold, but he quit. He quit and he didn't go beyond that. This is a good story because it tells us a lot about the situations we sometimes find ourselves in. We are close. We get things and things might be nice. We fail to realize sometimes the treasure is only three feet away from us. If we will just push ourselves a little further, go a little, put a little bit more, more than expected into whatever we're doing, that we're going to find probably the biggest part of life that we would ever want. And that's why I want to encourage you to realize where you are at right now. A lot of times people come to their wits end. They come to the end of what they think is they can possibly do. But a lot of times it's just a lack of education, a lack of desire. And we're hoping to encourage you to possibly go a little bit further. For you are a lot closer to a fantastic life than you might realize. The kingdom, as Jesus said, is at hand. When I hear that, I realize at hand, it's, it's being, I can reach this. The kingdom of God is at hand. So the beauty of life and everything I want is reachable, but it's up to me. And a lot of times I have to do more than what's expected to reach that part of life. Creating an inner belief system that drives you. You need to keep promises you made to yourself. A lot of times, you know, I made promises to myself to do this and that, but then because things started getting rough, I stop on myself. I quit on myself. We can't do that. We need to plan and then execute the actions and just do it. You know, myself, there's so many times I'm involved in something and I, yeah, you know, but when I push myself, I, I got to do this. I got to do this. And once I break through, I sit back, I, wow, am I ever glad I put that type of effort in? Because look at what happened just because I put a little effort in. And that's where we need to eliminate all the excuses and and see a life change in ourselves. You know, excuses sometimes are what cripple us and keep us from going on doing more than what we are expected to do and developing a set of principles to live by. You need to look at life and it's because life is all about principles. Principles don't care who you are. That's the beauty of these principles that God has set for mankind for success in all areas. Doesn't care what your last name is. It doesn't care. If you follow the proper principles, you will get what the principle will get you. And if you don't, you will not. That's where following correct principles is the only way to succeed in life. It's a matter of finding those principles. I know I, I teach marriage classes a lot. And I tell marriage couples the same thing. I say a lot of times you're only a principle or two away from a beautiful relationship. You know all about this and you're doing this right and that right and this right, but there's one area, one principle that you haven't really grasped. You need to find that. You know, you need to implement it. I love working with people and I talk about principle after principle when I work with people. Sometimes I'll get projects where I'll work with some young people or whomever it might be will work on a project. I love doing that sometimes, especially with young people, because they are an open book sometimes, and you just share thoughts. You share principles and things that you've learned with them. And what you do is you give them something to base their thoughts on, you know, and possibly live their life by, because principles are such a powerful part of a person's life. And if you can do nothing else, find the proper principles and start doing them and get yourself to a place mentally where you're doing more than what's even expected because on the other side might be that gold you're looking for. And the major character in how to succeed in life. Okay, there is a major character in how to succeed in life and it's a book and it's a book that you write. I, I believe a life that is not scripted is forgotten and you are a part of a book of life. You are in this right now. You know, and that's where applying good strategies, you know, uh, make your, you make your life matter. You know, you, you get in the situation, I myself, I'm gonna share this with you, but I myself, I journal. I journal, I, I put thoughts, I put the things I've done, stuff like that, because I realize that I don't wanna, I, myself, if I feel like I don't do that, I'm losing part of my life part of who I am, part of what I am, and stuff like of that nature. And it helps develop me. It helps me to want to create. I, I sometimes do things just 
to make a good story. You know, I mean, I'm going to write about this tomorrow. So what I'm doing here right now is part of my story. And you should be trying to create a story for yourself in life because your life really does matter. You know, finding you know, your, your story and the way you live life, you were created for a day like today, you know, and if you can get into a place where you go beyond yourself, you create a story line for yourself. You know, and that's where uh, <laughs> there's no wasted words in your book, but words of you following the good principles of life. You don't waste anything in the story of life that you are putting together. You are following the principles. This is going to be a bestseller uh, in, in you, as far as selling you on what you're doing. It sells you, you know, because you're seeing yourself develop. If something doesn't work, you don't quit on it. You know, you get to you find out what the principle that you are missing. You know, maybe I need to do a little bit more than expected in this area or whatever it might be to get where I want to go. But I will not quit on this because life is not about, not for quitters. You know, because someday we are going to be looking back at what we've had here and our story of life. We will be telling the story for eternity. What type of story do you want to have in life? And that's where it's so important to understand the successful ways of looking at life and developing your life because it doesn't end. This is something we'll carry for eternity. Maximizing your skills for greater good. Directing your intentional thoughts and actions using your skills. Developing those skills. The areas that you are good in. Developing your best version of you for all those that are around you. You know, becoming, doing the extra, more than expected, developing the skills so that I can be the best I can be for everyone that's around me, including myself. Remembering that God gave you the skills to show his glory and to show the greatness of what he does. God is wanting to show how good he is and how great he is. And that's where we can do more than expected as far as developing our life. We are allowing ourselves to shine. You know, I know the good book says we need to let our light shine upon this earth. And when we allow our skills and our abilities, the things that we're capable of to be reach out to limits that are beyond us, I often tell people, I often tell people that when we do the possible, in God's eyes, it gives him the opportunity to do the impossible in our lives. So when we take the time to say, hey, Lord, you know, I'm going to use everything you've given me. I am going to do more than what the people around me of this world might expect of me, because I know there's a lot more to me and you've created a lot more to me as well as to you to do more and beyond everything that's expected because we want the best of life. We want to be able to shine. We want to give glory to everything that you've created into us. And we want to bless the people around us. Keeping in mind that one more thought and action could change your life forever. People have told me that their lives don't count. I've got good news for them. And I think that's what the good news in the Bible is all about. There's more to life than what you know you might experience right now. You know, and your life does count. Every part of life counts. And that's where we need to have that mindset. And I want to leave you with the thought that if you are that you are special and God wants to do a special thing just for you. You are special. I myself, you know, I go through different dec declarations every morning. You know, part of part of those de de excuse me, easy for me to say, those declarations are declaring the greatness of God in me. I want you to do the same thing for you because God has done a good work in just allowing you to be alive. And if you're hearing this message, I pray that it blesses you, blesses your family, all those you share it with, that you'll be enriched with this. If you want to join our channel that and subscribe to our channel, that would be great. Because the more we can grow this, the more it can reach more and more people. Because I believe God has got a message for you. And he's created you to do more than expected. Thank you so much for being with us. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.